Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for uh, picking up the phone to us. We wanted to uh, reach out because there was some conversation, some narrative going on in the social media world uh, saying that you have sold all your uranium. Is that true? No, we have sold none of our uranium. Right. So what, what, what's going on? I, I saw Presley saying that you, you were the trifactor of rare, rare earth vanadium and uranium is being shipped to different, uh, p- different parts. And uh, so what's, what's happening then? Well, we, we, look, we saw it as a significant milestone because in the week of that April 4th, we had three truckloads of all of through those three products. Okay. The uranium, the vanadium, uh, and the rare earth carbonate. So, uh, you know, what facility out there in the world can, can claim that, that they have, cl- they have, they've sent commercial quantities of uranium, vanadium, and this rare earth product. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 I don't know anybody else in the world that can do that or is doing that. You know, we're doing it at commercial quantities. Uh, we are selling some of our vanadium. Uh, we're selling it currently all of our carbonate to, uh, to, uh, Neo uh, in Silmet's uh, facility at the Silmet facility in Estonia. We have not sold any of our uranium. We just shipped our uranium to a conversion facility so that it can be sold at some later date. It basically an in inventory there. Uh, and, and so it's just really a readiness is what it is, Matt. Right. Okay. So you, let's talk about uranium because that's, that's the big question here. So some uranium, a truckload, so it has gone to Con- well, Converdine. Well, during the week of April 4th, I mean, we were shipping probably a truckload a week of uranium to gotcha. Converdine uh, for storage. And the next step in the process is to, is to convert, is do the conversion to UF6. So this is commonly done. So, you know, if people think that shipping it to the conversion facility uh, is selling it, it's not. It's just shipping it to uh, the converter. It's there. Uh, if you sell it, in a lot of cases, the utilities will just take like a book transfer. And it's, it's, it's kind of like having the uranium in the bank account that you can just shift it over. Okay, so look, but what's actually happened so in simple terms is you've moved it to Converdine. There's, there's truckloads each week going, going to Converdine. You're paying them a fee. Is that right? But they don't own no, it. You don't, still own it. We don't pay it. them a fee until it's converted. We don't pay them a fee until it's converted. I, I think we pay them a fee for, for storing it there. Oh, right. You're paying a fee for storing it. At some point, they'll convert it, which you'll pay another fee for, right? Um, and obviously, it's sitting on, on their property and not, and, and not yours. I guess there's a little bit of benefit to you there in, in that sense. So um, what is the plan with all of this stuff that's going, sitting over there at Converdine? Well, our plan is just to have it in inventory at Converdine. And, and some people want to buy U308. Some people want to buy... Um, you know, in UF6, and it just gives us flexibility on what end product uh, uh, we ultimately sell. So, um, you know, it doesn't mean just because it's there that we're going to sh- we're going to convert it into UF6. But somebody who buys it may very well do so, and and maybe we do. So, there's different ways of getting there, Matt. Um, I mean, if you want to use the, the same analogy with the Vanadium, the V205 that uh, we're shipping to Pennsylvania. Uh, we're shipping the V205, and it gets converted into ferrovanadium. So, uh, you know, we're going ahead and, and paying that fee to do that so that if people want V205 or they want ferrovanadium, you know, we can sell either product. Gotcha. Okay. So you're just kind of moving it f- further down the supply chain, but you still retain ownership and control of it, but it's it's nearer the point at which you know, a purchase and acquisition would 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 be made. The 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 end bar um, will go to those facilities and pick it up, or be transported from those facilities to the to the end bar. Okay, exactly. We're just moving it down the supply chain, and because you know, different people want different products, so so we try to maintain um, you know the uh, uh, that material so that we can we can deliver what people want delivered whenever we decide to deliver it. <laughs> okay, no, fair, fair enough. And then like another kind of interesting uh, question or, 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 or pose, which was obviously if they have sold it, we now know you haven't sold it. Having cash, especially 700,000 times, whatever you get for 700,000 pounds, is uh, could be a lot of money, you know, so what? If it's just sitting as cash, so what? It's the case of what do you do with it? So you're not at the point, I guess, one where you need cash. You've got a big balance sheet at the moment. Um, or at the point where you can actually make decisions about the so what component. So what do you do with the money? Yeah. Well, the um, 
you know, certainly holding these, these, these elements uh, uh, has been a, a, a great game plan, right? With the increases in uranium and vanadium prices, uh, we will, we'll, we'll just, we just, we just will figure out how to, uh, you know, convert that into the hard currency when the time's right. We are looking at restarting some of our mines. Uh, you know, we're starting to spend more money on restarts or, or getting ready for restarts. Uh, we're very uh, excited about that to go back into to, uh, um, conventional and ISR uranium production in, in not too distant future this year, likely. Um, you know, we're starting to, to spool that up. So, yeah, it's things are moving quickly. But I think on that release on the trifecta, you know, one of the real key uh, parts of that release was just on this rare earth front where we're doing uh, this first uh, uh, step of commercial separation. Okay, commercial separation where we're separating out the lanthanum and making a very, very pure rare earth carbonate that is well north of 30% NDPR, uh, you know, a very, very nice product. So, you know, again, we continue to, to do value add at various steps as a company with these various specialty elements, you know, for our critical mineral hub at the White Mesa Mill. Okay. Totally understand, right? You've explained where you are with 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 the uranium. Okay, let me let me just stick with the uranium. Okay, and then I I, I want to come on to the rare earths because that's the bit which I think you've seen tremendous um, growth and appreciation from uh, in the last twelve months. So with uranium, are you're you're at the point where you're kind of sh showing that you can move stuff further down the supply chain and that you actually know how to go about doing that, which which is great. You will monetize it at some point. W what's happening there in North America? You're talking about get, doing some restarts. You're obviously getting things moving here, process, processing stuff um, at White Mesa. Is is North America starting to just more broadly outside of even you know your own energy fields? Is it starting to move? Is it starting to get those signals that they need they need to start moving? Are you seeing other people doing similar moves to you? As far as others in the uranium business, yeah. Well, I haven't seen a lot, but but I know some people are look at it, everyone the the more advanced permitted uranium projects, people would be looking at how they increase the readiness. The, the thing that, that that's, that's interesting is that, and this, one of, one of the things I'm seeing right now is, uh, you know, the impacts of inflation. I think that's surprising a lot of people, just getting the supplies you need for a restart. Uh, I think that uh, if you have to build a, a new site right now, I think the cost of doing so is going to shock people. It's going to shock them on the cost it's going to shock them on the timing. So, you know, we're at a unique position that we have all these, these constructed sites that are already constructed. And that puts us at a substantial advantage. Um, we've got, you know, inventories of, of ore to process at the mill. Uh, we've got the, the inventories that we produce, we didn't buy, uh, you know, and we've, we've got, um, you know, projects that are ready to go and are highly scalable. So I think that if you haven't got your site built right now in the world. I don't care if it's in the United States, around the world, it's going to be shocking when you try to actually do that and what that extra layer is going to cost on top of your operating costs. Okay. I, I hear you. We're having that conversation a lot around, you know, what did 55, what does $55 uranium two years ago look like today? We, it, it's more than 55, right? So I understand. That. I don't have the conversation with you. I want to, want to stick, stick, stick the brief here, which is what, what, what's happening with you guys. So you're starting to move, get things moving. The mill, we've talked about the mill previously, and we've talked about milling agreements with other companies. Should they get into the position where they are um, producing? Have you advanced any conversations? Have you got any agreements in place? Are you any uh, closer to deciding if you will work with um, uh, other other companies, and if so, have you made any uh, choices as to who? Uh, I'm trying to kind of nail this down because again, lots of conversations, lots of companies about the potential of working with you guys. Are you any closer to agreement with any of them? No, the answer is no. With the exception of a Consolidated Uranium, we have a milling agreement with Consolidated Uranium. They're the only ones. Uh, you know, what do we do in the future? Um, you know, I, I, I'm not so sure we're going to give milling agreements actually at all. Uh, you know, at some stage, maybe, maybe, 
we may have a purchasing agreement uh, with people that are in full compliance with their permits, have the permits and are full compliance. If people are not in full compliance, we, there's no way we're going to touch their, their, their material. No way. We cannot take that risk as a company. So look, I'm not going to say we're not going to work something out with a few other parties because I, I think we will if this market continues to be strong. We're going to be very selective on who that is. They have to be in full compliance and they have to be in a position that they can um, uh, deliver material quantities of uh, uranium or uranium vanadium ores uh, at the mill that makes it worth our while. These tiny little quantities don't, don't, aren't going to ha- uh, cut it. And so, you know, we're going to take it step by step, but I'll just want to underline if, if people are not in full compliance, um, we're not going to touch them at all. Okay. There's no way we can. But you'll need to come up with some kind of commercial arrangement, right? Be- and that, that when you say you're going to make it worth your while, I, I know you haven't begun conversations, but what what would that look like? What would what could that look like? Because I want to understand what's what do you get out of it? What, you know, make it worth your while. What do they get out of it? And then what does that mean? What could that mean for their economics? It just helps, you know, with calculations further down the line if if these things happen. Yeah. Well, look, I don't want to get into the the you know exact details, but it, it it it's it's a percentage of the contained material that you know if we do something like and it, it's it's different too between a uh, a milling agreement and a say maybe a, a purchasing agreement, um, you know they're they're different, and so uh, you know I don't want to go down the 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 the, the key differences, but um, but when when we look at you know we've got to look at what it costs us from our minds to deliver or to the mill, what it costs us to process it, what it costs us to sell it, market it, ship it, all those things. Um, you know, we definitely have to get our cut. But but when when people mine a ton of ore, uh, they, they're not going to get paid for a ton of what that contained value is. There's going to be a su- substantial um, a cut in value on that because a lot of the costs are in, um, in the processing of it and selling of it. So uh, I'll just leave it at that, Matt. But um, I think I think people try to underestimate, uh, you know, what they they're actually going to achieve uh, by mining a ton of ore. It doesn't you don't just wiggle your nose and it turns into finished goods, uranium and vanadium. Okay, but what I'm hearing is you will take out the costs, and then you'll, there'll be some economic agreement about what the split of what's left. Correct. Okay, I'll leave it there. Let's go to let's go. Okay, vanadium. I think we 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 create a similar process. You you kind of um, move, moved it. It's sitting there. It's still yours. Um, and at some point, um, someone may come along and buy it, or you may choose to sell. You may choose to sell it. Right. Fine. Rare earth. That's a bit more exciting. Um, you've you've shipped this carbon o- over to um, your, your partner Neo, as I understand it. Right. That's that, that's the deal. Correct. Um, what, what size of shipment are we talking about? Why, why, why start this process now? I mean, these are small amounts at the moment. Is it, was that part of the agreement? Well, the, the, the you know, the NEO agreement, um, you know, as I said from the beginning, it, it allowed us to, you know, work together with NEO and Kimors and have, you know, U.S. mined, uh, cracked and leached at the mill and then going on to separation in Estonia and uh, there is no separation, uh, well, full integrated separation in the United States. Uh, so that's why we have the relationship with NEO. And we look at that as a long-term relationship. Um, but yeah, the, you know, we've been doing, uh, it's been around three, 400 tons of monazite um, in a batch. We've already done one batch and we're now doing our second batch from, from Kimors. And, um, and as we uh, produce that material. We put it in bulky bags and ship it to to the Um I, I know Neil likes the product. Uh, they want more product. You know, we're still uh, really you know getting our beads on uh, other sources of monazite from these various parties and various. As I've said many times, is about a half a dozen. And uh, as soon as we can secure that monazite at the mill, we plan to make it into carbonate and ship it on to to NEO in Estonia, uh, while we're still advancing our ability to do that at site with full-scale separation, which we're shooting for around 10,000 tons of REO. So 
to put that into context, I think that that um, Linus produces around 16 or 17,000 tons of REO. So this that would be very material scale in, in, in due course. Uh, and also, I think that Aluka announced that they're going to build a plant that's around uh, 17 to 18,000 tons of REO. So first phase, we're shooting for 10,000 tons of REO. So, uh, but we plan to have other phases, a second phase, maybe a third phase uh, as time progresses.